brought to you by... friends welcome back to etf today i would like to turn back the pages and delve a little into the annals of my youth by touching on a collective of chilling tales that i enjoyed when i was just a little stuffy before retrieving sarah bellow's cursed book and falling victim to whatever terrifying tale awaits within the confines of its pages I speak, of course, of director Andre Overdahl and Guillermo del Toro's adaptation of scary stories to tell in the dark. For those new to the subject, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark was a short but lasting series of books written by Alvin Schwartz and marketed towards children that compiled haunting tales and combined them with eerily horrific art by Stephen Gamble. It was this very lasting art that drew me to the series as a little one. Something about it just spoke to me, drawing me in and looming with me long after the final words of each titular tale had been read. To this day, many still adorn the walls of my subconscious, staining them with childhood fears. Scary Stories is a series that I have loved for many years, and part of me has always wished to see it grow outside the confines of paperbacks. So I'm sure you can understand my excitement at the announcement that this film was coming. Then having the director of the amazing Autopsy of Jane Doe and Troll Hunter attached alongside the masterful Guillermo del Toro as a producer just made me all but swoon. However, upon the release of the first trailer, I couldn't help but notice a striking similarity to another recent adaptation of children's horror fiction. Jack Black's Goosebumps took a very similar approach to bringing to life a series of popular novellas. More than similar, in fact, strikingly identical, which gave me an instant sinking in the depths of my gut. This is not the type of adaptation I was hoping for by any means. However, it was still Overdahl, still Del Toro, and still the source material that I have loved for all these years. So, I had to see it for myself. We pick up in 1968 America. The times are changing, and the civil world is entering a cultural shift. However, seemingly far more removed from the unrest in the cities across the country lies the small town of Mill Valley. Mill Valley. Hill Valley. Back to the future. I'm getting off topic. Where for generations, the shadow of the Bellows family has loomed large. It is in their crumbling mansion on the edge of town, where Sarah, a young girl with horrible secrets, turned her tortured life into a series of short stories, written into a book that has since transcended time. Stories that have a way of becoming all too real for Stella and her friends, who happen upon them while exploring the remains of the house's tragic past. Del Toro's influence hangs heavy throughout the entirety of this film. From the practical effects to the general visual style of the color and camera work, every aspect feels as if it were crafted by his highly elegant hand. If I didn't already know better, I would have just assumed that he was the one to direct this film. Especially given that the entire film took place in the late 60s. Del Toro often lingers in the past setting his work in very different and often simpler times. Which was a surprise for me going into this one, because I was not expecting it to take place in such a turbulent time in the past. Visually, I enjoyed this film very much. It featured a beautiful flowing camera style, a gorgeous, vibrant color palette when called for, 
contrasted by dreary and haunting sequences drown in deep murky shadow that almost always accompany the things lurking within. I found myself wishing that the film had been presented in a stark black and white though, bringing us closer to the prominent nature of those original pieces of art from the novels. The special effects throughout the film were, for the most part, entirely practical. An insistence from both Del Toro and Overdahl, no doubt. And I have to say that I have never seen depictions so close to the source material in all my life. Though some are very clearly aided by CG assistance, these creatures were crafted with precise detail, making it seem as if each of them had stepped directly off the page. I personally couldn't believe how close they were able to get them to the images that had been burned into my mind for so long. I thought the film was paced fairly well, considering the amount of content and characters that the writers were working with. However, I did notice a few areas that felt a bit janky, so to speak. One major example that stood out to me was when the kids went to see the old woman for more information about Sarah Bellows. As they were waiting for someone to answer the door, one of the kids randomly just mentions having a nightmare that he is afraid that the book is going to use against him. Before this moment, we never hear or see anything that even hints to this dream, so it sort of comes out of nowhere where the information is suddenly dumped into our lap. It almost felt as if it was shoved in, so that they could work in some kind of setup for the whole Red Room set piece at the hospital. I definitely feel like they could have handled this much better, possibly delivering some sort of hints or context earlier in the film that could pay off later. The performances throughout this film were fairly strong. I found myself having no trouble relating to the characters or following their motivations. I really liked that each of them felt grounded in the time period, dealing with issues that were relevant to the world surrounding them. I also enjoyed that the further we went into the narrative, the more we got to learn about each of them, and the deeper we got to delve into why they are the way they are. We weren't given a simple brat pack of nerds. We were able to catch a glimpse of why each of them is somewhat damaged and then enlightened, however minimally, to the dark areas in their lives that they kept hidden beneath the surface. I sort of feel like further viewings might reveal deeper details woven throughout this that could make the story that much more impactful. Regarding the story approach to the film, personally, I'm not exactly happy with the choice to create a single running narrative where the stories from the books I know are real and all exist within the same narrative structure. This is just my own take on things, but I feel this would have served far greater justice to the source material as a simple anthology film, or even a series, much in the vein of the Twilight Zone or even Creepshow. I personally love anthology films, and I have always felt that this could make a really great one. However, I do understand that anthology films don't generally do well at the box office, which I assume is why studios have been attempting to develop this new way around the concept. For me, it just doesn't hit. I'll always take a strong anthology of short tales over whatever you would call this new adaptive format. I will give them that they were able to work in an extraordinary amount of detail from the pages of the books. My favorite was the introduction of the Jangly Man and the story of Mi Tai Doti Walker. Now for those of you who want to avoid spoilers, I recommend jumping ahead about a minute or stopping the video here. For those who recall the story, they do an amazing little bit with the dog at the police station. As we begin to hear the Jangly Man approaching, the dog begins to growl. But it's not just any growl. It's almost rhythmic. Almost as if in the pattern of Lichi Kichi Kali Mali Dingo Dingo. Now, maybe I was imagining it, but I hope to God I wasn't. Because this is an amazing detail to have worked in. Kind of going to sound weird to those of you who have never read the books, but for those who have, <laughs> trust me, it's fucking awesome. Overall, I have to admit that this one surprised me. 
While I always attempt to go into each new film as blindly as I can, without too much expectation, the trailer for this one definitely planted seeds of doubt in my mind. But upon seeing the final film, I can't say that I was disappointed exactly. While it wasn't the film I wanted, I did enjoy it. I felt the ending could have been far stronger and much subtler in its attempts to set up a sequel, but that's a whole nother story. This film was a pretty delightfully creepy tale stitched from the pages of a book series that has terrified and uneased children for at least as long as I have been alive and has now found a new form to continue its haunt. I'm giving scary stories to tell in the dark a B. If you're a longtime fan of this series like me, I recommend giving this one a chance. Though you may be afraid to see another gem from your childhood bastardized and butchered, rest assured, Overdahl and Del Toro treat this series with the utmost respect and give great care in crafting an enjoyable narrative that does its best to recreate the horrors that terrorized our psyche when we were younger. I feel that this is a film with enough content to keep those like myself satisfied while elevating the horrors for those casual film goers and keep them at the very least unnerved long after they've returned home. Maybe even giving them second thoughts about those bumps in the night. Don't worry. I'm sure it's nothing out of the ordinary, though I would be wary if your dog begins to sing that jangly song. Litchi, kitchi, kale, male, dingo, dingo. For it's only a matter of time before you will hear the response. Me, Tai, Doty, Walker. If you've had a chance to see this flick, please feel free to let me know. It's just a quick scroll down there in that comment section below. If you like this video, maybe a little more than you can describe, shoot me a little thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you really enjoy my channel and you want to support it even more, consider checking out ETF on Patreon or Tippy, where every pledge and every tip brings more films to explore. But all jokes and rhymes aside, if you have any suggestions for films that you would like me to check out or that you would like to see reviewed on this channel, feel free to reach out to me here on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and I will catch you all next time. Thanks for watching!